talk about how good it feels to see Dennis Leamy in his Leinster gear. It's one of those things that really gives me a warm feeling. It's like, wow, look what we just did. Us, us being Leinster, obviously, and you, you, oh, and you being Munster in this instance. We took your boy. We've taken his skills. We've injected them into the, the best young players in the country. And we're going to show it in your face now for the next decade on the back of this man's genius. Leamy was always one of my favourite Munster players. I mean, if you're allowed to have favourite Munster players when you're a Leinster fan. But, like, he would tear up trees for Ireland. His performance in Twickenham against England. Got to mix up my years here now. But the Shane Horgan two tries, he is sensational in that game. He is just, like, brute force, brilliant intelligence. There's a, a line-out towards the end of the game where it's just Leamy, where you're just like, Leamy! And there he is, looking, looking, spiffing in his Leinster gear. It just, it just seems to fit him. Mm. I think maybe what Leinster should do is just decide that Tipperary is actually really culturally more oh, Leinster than oh Munster. Oh, my God, here we go. We'll, we'll just take Tipperary from you. You're not really using oh, it. No. You, you kind of seem Get to be under, on the line underutilizing ASAP. it. That is it. I mean, uh, I, I'm just going to decide that. I think you'll find Trevor Hogan also a key member of the Leinster backroom team. This, this imperialistic... Uh, view that you so rail against quite often on this show has reared its head in truly disgusting form Tipperary's this morning. The best trying thing to annex Tipperary for Leinster. Well, I mean, Aidan O'Brien's actually... Offaly should be a Munster. Aidan O'Brien's actually should be a Munster. Look, I mean, I think, I think Offaly spiritually feels a bit more like Munster. Maybe you can have it. Maybe it's a fair trade. No, I wouldn't trade Tipperary for Offaly, sorry. But I, I would take Offaly, you know. Oh, no, it's a trade. Free. It's, it's a trade. We'll take, we'll take the Lowry's. No so problem how do you feel as a as a... Died in the wool monster rugby fan. <laughs> feeling, uh, feeling Dennis Lee, seeing Dennis Lee in the, the photograph it was like, yeah, that looks good. I think yeah, Rory O'Connor in the, in the Independent today has a list of uh, of the wild geese. So uh, I'm considering uh, Dennis Lee a wild goose of of Munster. Van Gran and Core just keeping the seats warm for uh, a Raj O'Connell Lee Mike Prendergast dream team to come back. Uh, a travelling Wilburys collection. Of uh, of monster geniuses to come back one day down the line. So it's okay. I mean, you're, you're you've obviously you're leathered with money in uh, Leinster. You've got an unbelievable private school system, and you don't know what to do with your cash. And it's great that you're you're able to uh, to to fund the development of a of a great young coach like Dennis Leamy. And we will be truly grateful for your service down the line. You're doing a great job of keeping your your best people associated with the team. Oh no! So here's Rory O'Connor's list in the Independent today. Dennis Leamy, Leinster's newly appointed contact skills coach. Dunnick O'Ryan, who's obviously mm -hmm. uh, finished his career at Racing and is now part of La Rochelle's coaching ticket. Mossy Lawler, backs coach at Connacht. Um, he works with his cousin and fellow Shannon man, Colm Tucker, who handles defence. Felix Jones, obviously oh, yeah. uh, famously part of uh, Razzie's setup, learning all the dark arts. James Collin, a coach at Poe. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, he became a coach at Poe in 2017. Now defence coach at Toulon. Uh, Mike Prendergast, obviously who is now Racing 92 attack coach. Paul O'Connell with Ireland. Flannery, who obviously won the Premiership last year with Harlequins, uh, really quickly got to Harlequins. Team goes and explodes. Uh, Ronan O'Gara, obviously, at La Rochelle. And Declan Kidney at London Irish, who uh, seems to be getting better as well. It's like, that's pretty amazing. It just it, That's what happens when you have uh, green shoots all the time in, in a phenomenal part of the country. Uh, great people are, are just going to have to fly away for a little while and, and come home when, when they're all ready. So I, I think I think this is something that, that people should be proud of, that there are all these uh, fingers in the pies across Europe and across Ireland as well. If um, if the Ireland coaching job becomes available after the Rugby World Cup and the Leinster coaching uh, ticket is transfixed to the Ireland one, which would seem like a, a fairly... It's not not that controversial to say so. Maybe maybe Paul O'Connell, who's already in the setup, would step up. It's, so, it, yeah. it's, not, a, it's not a done deal, but at that point you could easily see... O'Gara and Leamy and Flannery in charge don't of Leinster. Say it. Don't say Oh my God. Wouldn't that be amazing? Well, he, here's the thing. For that to happen... O'Gara plays a, a Leinster style of rugby. <laughs> Maybe he wouldn't be that welcome in, in Munster anymore, you know? For, for that to happen, I would say that, first of all, yes, you would need the, the Leinster team to, to take up the, the, the national post. But you would also need, I suspect, this current Munster ticket to still be in charge, which means... That monster have won some silverware at the end of the season because uh, I'm not it sure. It could be Larkham. It could be Larkham in charge, couldn't it? Uh, there, there will be some sort of of, of moving. I'm not, I'm not sure though. I think the criticism that has existed uh, for Munster has been 
ticket wide it hasn't just been towards Van Grand I'm sure Van Grand's got the sharp end of it I don't think that's uh, to be honest I disagree with that so you know, that's up for grabs Really do you think I thought Larkin came in, came in for a good bit of criticism at the end of last year when I think people are looking seeing a little bit unimaginative in a in an attack. I think people are seeing the signs of what Larkham can do. Definitely, I think Larkham's uh, reputation is is big. So, um, well, either way, if you, if you allow me to exist in this fantasy world for a moment, where Munster have won the Champions Cup or uh, the URC at the end of this season, uh, it means they've come upon some sort of success, success that they haven't had in ten years, and as a result of that things are going okay for Munster so either way it's a win-win either you've got your boys okay, home so you've won a league title say, say you win a league title and then next yeah. year you don't win the league and then the the lads move on the, the coaching ticket with Leinster moves on to Ireland and then it's like um, O'Gara and I mean it would be a bit of a homecoming for Felix Jones uh, O'Gara Felix Jones and um I don't know any any other connection there yeah but like it's great because it'll be like inside agents in South Dublin winning the winning the European Cup where like they have their ear to the ground they're watching St Michael's games to scout for Leinster and actually it's like yeah we got this uh, kid James Ryan just not good enough for Leinster we're I think Munster look, I need for a second row there. Paul O'Connell's just after retiring. Uh, let's send him down the road. So this, no matter what way you look at it, is just a, a perfect scenario. Uh, well, congratulations to Dennis Leamy on, on stepping up yeah. to um, be involved with the, the Leinster senior team. It is great that there is a pathway for young Irish coaches to progress through the provinces and to get jobs and, and to be part of that uh, coaching system is actually a clear sign that things are working well. We could definitely do it some more and... Um, you know, I, I actually think there's a good chance Andy Friend would be an amazing Ireland coach, like, and he might well be a, a candidate for it. Uh, so uh, he's going to be on the um, show on Sunday. Looking forward to hearing what he has to say. Really interesting in the papers today talking about how the Jake White comments aren't water off a duck's back. That actually it's frustrating listening to people say that about Connacht because it's not true, and that he knows the work that goes in, and he knows that the identity that they're creating is something unique and different. And I think you you see it, and you, you certainly. Anytime we we had him in um, at a show we did in uh, in Galway, and you come away from every interaction with him feeling positive about life, positive about his own belief system and the the quality of work that he's doing, and it's backed up on the field. Like that's the thing. There's, they had a horrific injury look over the last eighteen months, but anytime they've had a semblance of their first team available, they're playing top quality rugby in sometimes in pretty grueling conditions. There's an ambition there that, that kind of tallies and, and chimes a little bit with what the conversation we had with Fergal Logan a bit earlier on. It's like, you can't just set your team up to defend. You've got to set your team up to attack. And uh, it seems like the ambition that he has for what the game should be played like is something that I think fits really well with our culture. We like to take the fight in all our sports. All our best sports teams take the fight to the opposition. And, and I don't know. That, 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 that we kind of grope around for what the identity of Irish sport should be but it should be front foot I think and I think your point maybe almost is in line with what Andy Friend said the other day that you know he, he hit back at Jake White because there is that real sense out there that real disrespect towards Connacht and if Andy Friend was doing what he was doing right now with, with Leinster or Munster obviously on a greater scale then of course he would be in the Ireland conversation, whereas you don't hear his name mentioned one bit. Now, it may be to do with the fact that there is genuinely outstanding uh, Irish coaches and Irish candidates, and, and, and maybe that's what people see as the next move for the, the Irish head coach job. But I do think part of it is that he is he is Connacht head coach, and what he has done has is produced a, a brilliant style of rugby over the last couple of years, which looks like it's going to get more effective over the next little while too. So he's definitely been a brilliant addition to the conversation in Irish rugby and unbelievably dedicated to, to the gig in Connacht as well. Yeah, OK. Uh, we should talk about Gordon Darcy's column today about Munster. Um, he thinks the Munster back row is as dynamic and effective as it has been in, in recent seasons that Coombs is actually a significant upgrade uh, on standard that Jack O'Donoghue is, is finally delivering on his promise and that Peter O'Mahony makes this kind of perfect balance in that back three and that this is the time where Munster have to deliver that there are no excuses there's no real weaknesses in the squad at the moment that would prevent them from going to a European final and from winning the league is that am I am I paraphrasing correctly? Well, part, part of me thinks this is yera 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 from Gordon Darcy, you know, saying that the pressure's on Munster going into to this year's campaign. But the the main part of me thinks that he, he is spot on about this. And when you see some of the talent that came off the bench the other day in Zebo and Snyman and the players who they were replacing, having a decent evening, certainly in the second half, you're like, okay, the the depth is getting better. And I know 
this false dawn has emerged at times over the last couple of years where you're like, OK, maybe the depth is there because that was always the trump card for Leinster, that you could probably live with them for 50 minutes and then you couldn't live with them because the quality, they test quality coming off the bench. And maybe Munster are, are, are getting to that level. And as you say, he focuses in on the, the back row. And he even refers to, to Jack Conan, who's coming back from the Lions, looking down the M7, thinking to himself, there's a battle with, with Gavin Coombs here. And that battle will get more intense because Coombs is thriving in a back row that doesn't have CJ Stander. And while Stander has been an unbelievable servant for Munster and for Ireland, there is a bit more dynamism now about this back row according to Gordon Darcy there is a bit more invention that is required and someone like Coombs is is thriving in that scenario it's going to be hard to decide who is uh, your number four to, to number eight over the next few months when everybody's back fully fit like he picks out Byrne, Snyman, Klein, O'Mahony, Coombs and Jack O'Donoghue five in, in, into six there so uh, whoever's coming off the bench there is still of, a, of an unreal standard now there will be injuries it, it always happens in the second and back row but that depth is getting stronger like he talks about Ben Healy and Keenan Knox and says that they are two guys that are going to have to make season defining contributions and I think the best thing you can say about those players at the moment is that we just don't know what they're going to be like when uh, they're in the white heat of a top quality battle but the early signs again are, are really really good and Healy in particular just looks exceptional look, and it's just not even to do with his skill set it's to do with his confidence and how he does not look out of place whatsoever when he's coming into these games um, as I say there will be higher pressure scenarios for, for, for these players uh, beyond the first couple of weeks of the URC but the early signs you have to accept are, are very positive Yeah and you must be, be you must properly be excited by what you're seeing at the moment 100% and it comes back to that idea that you have a squad where you're like this is this is something that can that can challenge for trophies the, the only thing is that it is a squad that has to challenge for trophies and, and it really does and I think that this the squad that they've had in previous years has challenged it's just fallen short in particular against Leinster in defining games in on a domestic level and, and I think that that's where things have fallen flat I think last year two lose were much better um, in the, the Champions Cup of course the on the day, the game could have gone differently for Munster. In, in fairness, it, it could have. But I think quality-wise, Toulouse just looked to have the edge on, on Munster in a couple of different departments and particularly in, in the halfbacks. And it's just going to be really interesting to see how Munster develop in that area over, over the next little while. And it comes back to Healy again. It comes to, to Craig Casey. But also to see that level of performance from Conor Murray that prompted Warren Gatland in the first place to make him Lions captain, uh, to, to get that level of performance from Joey Carberry, which made him one of the most exciting young talents in Irish rugby. Like, if all those things come together with this renewed grunt and depth up front, absolutely this is a team that can that can challenge on both fronts. You do just have to be cautious because it, it feels like we've said this exact same thing over previous seasons with Munster, but this, this feels is a level above, you know? It does feel different because you've still got DLN Day to pepper in as yeah. well. Now, there was that kind of nagging issue of the November internationals and the South Africans going off and playing there and coming back and just how tired they're going to be because Dialende has played a lot of rugby and he's been away for a long time. So, um, but The thing with Dialende is that we started to see a really positive version of him at the end of last season. And I wonder, was that because he wasn't involved in the Six Nations? You know, that like once you get to the business end of the season, actually the, the South Africans are going to be the ones that are in, in good nick. 